Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to beautiful Flathead Field in northwestern Montana. My name is Scott Gladstone, and I'm so excited to bring you today's contest between the visiting Billings Mustangs and the hometown Glacier Range Riders. The Range Riders come in with a record of 16 wins and 28 losses. The Billings Mustang, just three games above 500 at 23 and 20. Neither of these teams have a chance to clinch the first half crown that's already been clinched. Missoula is all over it and cruising at that. Seven games above the next closest team, which is Great Falls. The last time out between these two squads, it was a 10 to nine victory for Billings and what a game it was. Uh, just absolute back and forth and incredibly fun to watch. And it looked like Billings had it for sure, but then Dean Miller came out and <laughs> There's not much more to say about Dean Miller. What he's done this week, four home runs, including two last night and a three-run bomb in the bottom of the ninth that gave the chance to the Glacier Range Riders. They weren't able to get it over the line, but a 10-9 loss was an exciting one for all the fans that made it out on the Thursday night at Flathead Field. We're expecting a great crowd here on Friday night as the Glacier Range Riders wear their Jammer Red jerseys. Billings will throw starter Sean Kiley. The Glacier Range Riders will pick up and throw last week's player of the week, pitcher of the North, Noah Barrow. So keep an eye out for him, see what he can do after he had kind of a rough outing in his last time out when Missoula got to him in the bottom of the fourth inning. We'll pause with the National Anthem and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Flathead Field. We are just about ready for baseball. It's going to be a good one between these Glacier Range Riders and the Billings Mustangs. It has been a good series thus far. It started out with a 7-1 to one win by the Glacier Range Riders on Monday night. They took care of business, got an early lead against the Billings Mustangs, and then it was a successful successful victory on Tuesday night as well as Wednesday night, both by the score of 3-2, to two, including a walk-off error that ended the game in Wednesday night's contest. And then last night, I already mentioned it, the 10-9 victory. That was an absolute slugfest. Five home runs combined by each team, three by Billings, two by Dean Miller on Glacier. The starting pitcher for the Glacier Range Riders tonight is Noah Barros. Barros on the season. His stats don't look great, but that's mainly because he had a really rough outing 
last week. I mentioned it on Sunday. He went through the first three innings pretty solid, only allowing one run. And then the Missoula Bats, uh, I don't even know how to definitively define what they did, but they absolutely shelled Barros. And so because of that and that inning that Nick Hogan gave a long leash to him and a lot of earned runs came against him, his ERA was bumped all the way up to 6.69. He has a four-win, three-loss record, 39 innings pitched for him this year, 34 strikeouts to 12 walks. But again, it, it is one inning where 15 runs were scored, and I believe nine earned runs came against him in that inning, and he wasn't able to get it out. And that's a big reason why his stats are the way they are. He's only given up 29 earned runs all year in 39 innings pitch. So to give up nine in an inning was rough for him. But he is a very good pitcher. He's a strikeout pitcher. And he throws a strike there to start off this contest. 7.03 first pitch here at Flathead Field to Jalen Garcia, the leadoff man for the Billings Mustangs. That one will miss high. Count goes to one and one. Garcia leads off. Nagel bats second. Gabe Wirtz is batting three. Jackson Rape will bat cleanup as he has all series. Klein will bat fifth. And Bryce Jackson coming off his first career home run last night. Will bat six. This one's hit over to short. Grant Broussard will field. Jalen Garcia tries to run it out but does not have that extra juice to get it. And he is pretty fast. So that... We'll just say how good of an arm strength we saw there from Broussard to make sure that it was a clear out over there on the slow roller too short. The bottom three are Hovey, Barth, and Threlfall for the Billings Mustangs. Up comes Aiden Nagel. Nagel on the season, a 294 batting average, no home runs, and one RBI. Swing and a miss there, starts off his first trip to the plate today. He got last night off other than a pinch running appearance that he made, but then he was substituted back out after that pinch running appearance. 0-1 misses high, count goes to 1-1. One one. Noah Barros, I mentioned he's a strikeout pitcher. He sent the Pac West, which I believe is the name of the conference, the conference that Holy Names University is where he played his college ball, set the Pac West record for home runs in a, or I mean for, Strikeouts in a single season. That one's hit deep to the warning track, and that's why the word home run got in on me is because I thought that one might be a home run the way it came off the bat, but it goes all the way to the warning track where Dean Miller collects for out number two. Let's get to the defensive alignment real quick as Gabe Wirtz steps up. Justin Mazzone's behind the plate. Williams is over at third. Brant Broussard's the shortstop. Ryan Cash is at second base. Brody Wofford's the first baseman. Dean Miller's in left, who just got that one. McConnell's in center, and Sam Linscott is the right fielder for the Range Riders. First pitch misses the zone. Count is 0-1. The home plate umpire is Craig Struble. The first base umpire is Michael Chuckerman. And over at third base, it's Tony Prater. One change in the umpiring rotation as Craig Struble enters. And he calls that one a ball. Counts 2-0. Barros is originally from Prescott Valley, Arizona. And like I mentioned, graduated from Holy Names University this spring where he was that dude for the Hawks of Holy Name. He did play Juco ball at Glendale Community College. That one will miss high. Count will go to three and one. Hitters count here. Swung on. That one's carrying out to left field. Backing up is Dean Miller. And it'll go off the screen in front of the scoreboard. The Billings Mustangs keep their trend going from last night. Home run city, their fourth in just a little over a game. As they got close on that Nagel hit, but that Wirtz one gets over for a one nothing lead for Billings. 
Up comes the cleanup man, Jackson Raper, playing third base now and has the luxury of a one nothing lead. He went yard last night as one of the three home runs by Billings. First pitch will carry and get down into right field. So first pitch swinging, and he's aboard with a base hit. Jacob Klein, the current leader in batting average for the Billings Mustangs, batting 414. Three home runs and 19 RBIs for the second baseman. Out of Akron, Ohio, went, Akron, Ohio, went to Shawnee State University. And the right-hander will see the first pitch from the right-hander, Barros. Swung on, line to Brian Williams over at third. And he just sticks that glove up and grabs it to limit extra bases. A solo home run by Gabe Wirtz, however, makes the difference in inning number one. They're up one to nothing. We head to the bottom of the first. Sean Kiley signed with the Billings Mustangs just before the start of the season on May 19th. And the previously right-hander for the Portland Mavericks made his PBL debut and has, a, has had a successful season thus far. 3-0 record for him in four starts and nine total appearances. 29 in the third in innings pitched. He has 14 walks to 19 strikeouts originally from Los Angeles, California, and played his college ball at Division III Oberlin College. He, in his career, earlier today was reading an article about how he kind of brought a different mojo into Oberlin, which is not necessarily known for their athletics, the yeoman. They are known for being a very academically solid school. They have a great music program but you don't necessarily think Oberlin in line with a lot of successful sports programs, but him as well as some other players, one named Milo Sklar, turned the program around a little bit. They had both had illustrious careers, including helping the Yeomen win their first ever North Coast Athletic Conference title when they were freshmen. For Pit swing in there from Ben McConnell, carrying out to left field, but it's into the glove of Nagel for out number one. The crowd liked the way that cracked off the bat of McConnell, but hung up there long enough for Nagel to get to it. We'll give you the starting lineup for the Glacier Range Riders. Ben McConnell, who you just saw line out to left field, leads off. Ryan Cash bats second. Sam Lynn Scott third. Brody Wofford is in the cleanup spot. Dean Miller bats fifth. Livingston Morris is sixth, and the bottom three are Justin Mazzone, Brian Williams, and Brant Broussard. Ryan Cash, first pitch he sees from Sean Kiley. He's swinging. That one's going to be deep in the hole. Going to be a tough play. The throw across the diamond out over at first. Nice play by Jordan Barth, and he put some mustard on that throw. Enough to get out the speedster Cash, and two gone after three pitches in the bottom of the first. Sam Linscott, the right fielder, stepping in. Now the defensive alignment for the Billings Mustangs. Threlfall is behind the plate. The LC State graduate, Jackson Raper, 
after getting the day off in the field yesterday, returns to third base. Jordan Barth is the shortstop, who you just saw make a great play. Klein's over at second base. And Bryce Jackson is the first baseman. In the outfield from left to right is Nago Garcia and Gabe Wirtz. Cruz Taylor completely left off the lineup card today as he gets a full day off. But I'm sure pinch running, possibly pinch hitting opportunity might come his way later in this contest. 1-0. Swung on from Lynn Scott. He fouls it out of play. Counts down one and one. Two outs. One to nothing after the Gabe Wirtz solo home run in the top of the first. One swung on and fouled right into the base behind home plate. One, two, two outs. Pitch will be coming from the right-hander Kylie, who stands 5'11", 185 pounds. And swung on and missed on the high fastball. One, two, three inning for Sean Kiley. Just seven pitches thrown. Bryce Jackson, Hovey, and Barth will be up in the top of the second. Bryce Jackson is the man that leads off this inning as we'll get six, seven, eight. Bryce Jackson playing first base today and the Frostburg State University alum in all the crazy offensive back and forth slugfest we had yesterday. Failed to mention that it was his first career home run. This one will not be a home run as it is a high pop-up. Brian Williams comes in and makes the snag for out number one. Technically, Bryce Jackson has gone yard in a PBL game, but it doesn't go down as an official stat of a home run. He won a knockout round for the Billings Mustangs, which is, it's kind of like scoring a goal in a penalty kick shootout. It feels the same, and it feels almost bigger because it's to win the game, but you don't technically get credit for a goal if you do it in a penalty kick shootout. His first official on the stat home run as this one is a high floater. It's in a dangerous area. Brian Williams again makes the play. He has caught three straight outs. And Noah Barros, I'm sure, is appreciating his defense right now. First a line drive right to him to end the top of the first. Then a pop-up on the infield. And that one a pop-up on the outfield. Brian Williams is all over the place making some plays.
Jordan Barth now is the man coming up. Augustana University alum from Minnesota. He hit a home run on Tuesday night here. And he sees a called strike there as two pitches, two outs. Right now the Billings Mustangs likely trying to get out of this inning, taking a little bit longer to do it. And a swing and a miss there, though. He's behind 0-2. Oh, a check swing there. But it was nothing more than a flinch of the bat. But it goes down as a check swing because he made contact with the ball. Earned himself a foul and doesn't get a ball to his tally. Still 0-2 from Barros in to Jordan Barth. Ready, ready, matchup, the pitch. Swung on and missed. Five, excuse me, six pitch inning from Noah Barros. We'll be right back for the bottom of the second. Back here in the bottom of the second, it's Brody Wofford who will be the man to step up and lead off the bottom of the second. It was a 1-2-3 first inning worked by Sean Kiley. First pitch misses low and away. Something that struck me about Kiley when reading this old interview from the Oberlin Review with him during his senior season. When he was asked about his advice to his teammates as he gets a swing and a miss there count goes to one and one he he said let's take advantage of the fact that we're Oberlin College we are a smart school they want to be the smartest team in the conference that's a big advantage a and in a game like baseball that is of course very athletic and strength and skill based as that one hits the zone count goes to one and two for Kylie, he recognizes the ability of turning it into a chess game. At the bottom of the line, it's pitcher versus batter. Who guesses what? Who's anticipating? How do you outsmart your opponent? And I think that despite maybe a little undersized, as we see a broken bat into shallow right field, and it will fall. A base hit for Brody Wofford, and it doesn't matter how smart you are on that one. <laughs> Kylie allows his first hit because of a shard of wood. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of strength involved there from Brody Wofford because 
that bat had no chance. And he still got that ball in to the middle of the outfield. Wow. What an absolute obliteration of the lumber. A base hit for Brody Wofford, and it is one aboard with no outs. Jeez. Speaking of obliterating things, Dean Miller's at the plate. Sees a ball to start off his at-bat. He has had quite a series, has Dean Miller, and I said it last night, they should not give him anything to hit. And right there, that one, a perfect pitch on the inside corner count goes to one and one. Nearly lost his shoes on that one. Comes up empty. Count goes to one and two for Dean Miller, Riverside, California native. And in this seven-game series, the way he's been playing, I've already talked and covered pretty much everything <laughs> that I can say about Dean Miller. One, two. A wiggle of the bat as he prepares to see it from Kylie. Runners going, a delayed steal attempt by Brody Wofford, and he's safe at second. I think that might have been a hit and run or something. As <laughs> I think Wofford just confused the catcher throw fall because he, he almost looked like he was running in slow motion for the first part of that. Uh, uh, talk about the mental game that I said Kylie uh, talks about in terms of what he wants to take advantage of and what he wanted Oberlin to take advantage of when he played in college. And maybe that was some sort of mental thing from Wofford as he, not the fastest customer, but he'll get a stolen base. And there he will almost get doubled off as a line drive hit right to the shortstop, Barth Fields, and doesn't throw to second. But Brody Wofford, a good job to see that one and see it go into the glove and know he needs to get back to second. L6 for out number one. Wofford still in scoring position, though. For Livingston Morris at the plate. First pitch misses. Count goes to 1-0. and Ten pitches already this inning for Sean Kiley, and only one out to show for it. He got through his first in just seven pitches. One to nothing is the score here. The Mustangs lead the Range Riders. Tying run, standing in scoring position at second, though. Foul ball skips off the top of the bat of Livingston Morris. Count goes to one and one. I should shout out Brody Wofford. That is his fourth stolen base of the year. He's only been caught once. Four for five. Not a bad margin for your first baseman who is built with a lot more power than speed. One, one. Doesn't go, and it's in the zone. Count goes to one and two for Livingston Morris. One, two, swung on in the dirt. That's a strikeout for out number two. Justin Mazzone comes up now. Justin. The catcher will step into the left-handed batter's box. Brody Wofford still at second after stealing to get there. 
with his leadoff single to get him on base. First pitch swinging from a zone. It'll carry out to center field. Jalen Garcia tracking all the way and stopping and making the grab for out number three. Brody Wofford gets on with a broken bat single, but he is stranded at second. We head to the third. It is one to nothing. Billings leads. Zach Threlfall will lead off the top of the third for the Billings Mustangs as we see 9-1-2. And the catcher out of LC State, Threlfall. The first pitch into Threlfall, swung on. A well-struck ball to right center field, but Ben McConnell easily making up the ground to get to that one. Ben McConnell last night, one of the first times I've seen him real stunned in center field when he lost the ball in the lights. That led to a triple in the top of the ninth. The run later scored. And unfortunately for the Range Riders, it was the difference really in the one-run ball game. Ben McConnell all season, he flies around the outfield and covers pretty much every blade of grass from the scoreboard that's in left center all the way to really the Budweiser sign in right center. He was the first one to put a dent in the wall here at Flathead Field, and it makes sense for him because he helped put this stadium up, working throughout the offseason here with the construction crew. And uh, the first piece of damage in the outfield also belongs <laughs> to Ben McConnell. Swing and a miss, the count is 2-1 and one for Jalen Garcia. Garcia let out this game after grounding out to shortstop. 2-1, one, one out, base is empty here. Top of the third, it's one and nothing Billings. Gabe Wirtz had a solo home run, and that's the lone scoring play of this ball game. Swing and a miss there. Garcia was fooled and swung late and came up empty. On deck is Nagel. We were we will see him. Wirtz is in the hole with one home run to his name already. 2-2 from Barros. Mazone held that one, trying to frame it for about 
felt like 10 seconds. <laughs> Didn't get the call from our home plate umpire, Craig Struble. Again, Michael Chuckerman over at first. Tony Prater is the third base hump. Payoff pitch coming to Jalen Garcia. Swung on and missed. Garcia goes down swinging, and strikeouts have been big for the Glacier Range Riders this series. The problem where they struggled is with walks. They've given up way more than they want to be giving up. 40 strikeouts for them coming into this game, but 22 walks. And obviously yesterday the ERA flew up for both sides. But for Glacier that had been so solid, Their ERA for the series is at 3.75. Still good. Give you a chance to win. First pitch is a ball high. Range Riders wearing their red jammer jerseys. As the ball missed outside, it's 2 0. If you don't know what a jammer is, look up Jammer Glacier Park or, or something on Google Images. Jammers, Glacier, red jammer buses. Um, they are the first vehicles that took tourists through Glacier National Park. And as the foul ball makes it two and one, they are quite literally just old red buses. Obviously, they s have been updated <laughs> and they're still running. They're not still, you know, 1920s, 1930s vehicles. Uh, as this one's hit to second, Cash will field it off the ground. Wait for Wofford to get there and a simple play for out number three. Maybe I'll talk more about jammers when we come back. But for now, we go to the bottom of the third. It's one to nothing. The Range Riders trail the Mustangs. Brian Williams came in in a pinch hitting scenario last night and stayed in and played left field for one inning, I believe. Uh, Brian Williams will step in now as a starter. This is his fourth career start. Yesterday was his fourth appearance. First pitch does not swing. Count goes to 1-0. Oh. This is a D3-D3 D3 matchup right here. And as somebody who went to a D3 school, and worked at a D3 school. I love seeing the representation. Kylie from Overlin. And out of Birmingham Southern, Brian Williams. One and one now is the count. Called strike there. No outs, bottom of the third. Brian Williams leading off this inning. He's shown his defensive prowess already. Thought about swinging, does not swing. I'll tell you what, I arrive at the stadium at about 1 or 2 p.m. every day after going and printing out stuff at the office, which is about 15 minutes away from here. And usually when I show up, there's only a handful of players. As that one missed inside, count goes to 3-1. and one. 
And Brian Williams, since arriving on Monday for his first game, he has been here when I've been here in that early afternoon area when players are not required to show up at that point. 3-1 will miss. And Brian Williams will walk. I run out to the clubhouse where Nick Hogan is, has his coach's office. And he's here, of course, as well as most of the other coaches by that point. And Stu Peterson is almost definitely here. And about half the time, Stu Peterson has been working with Brian Williams out there in the batting cages over the right field fence. But sometimes it's just been Brian Williams putting in that work himself. Pitch will miss up and in to Brant Broussard. Count goes to 1-0. and Right now, six pitches in, in this inning, five balls, but a lot of them have not missed by much. The 1-0 as Brian Williams bluffed his steal, and that one misses on the inside. Sean Kiley right now pitching to the two smallest Glacier Range Riders in the starting lineup. Starting off with Brian Williams, who's listed at 5'10", 205. Brian Broussard also listed at 5'10". So that's the smallest strike zone to work with. And that one, not even close to that strike zone. We have eight pitches and seven balls. I believe it was the Nationals earlier this season. They threw 12 straight balls to load the bases and then struck the next three batters out. That one will be ball four, and getting himself into trouble is Sean Kiley right now. Two straight walks, and something that I mentioned the great Glacier Range Riders have struggled with, the Billings Mustangs have not. They have not walked a ton of batters this series. That's been a key for them. Obviously, they're losing the series three to one, so it hasn't been the biggest thing in the scheme of things. But still, you take what you can get. Ben McConnell is up now. He's 0 for 1. He's got two on and no outs here. And he'll square to bunt. Drop it down the third baseline. It's a hard one to Jackson Raper over there who throws. That's, oh. Wow. That looked safe. I, I thought that was safe by a healthy margin. Man, Ben McConnell can move down the line. And the sacrifice bunt is what he's going to get credit for. But, man, I thought that was a hit for him. Clearly, I'm biased. I'm the Glacier Range Riders broadcaster. But I didn't think he was going to be safe off the bat because I thought he hit it too hard to third base. And Jackson Raver made a good play on it. And usually, for most players, that just gets the job done. But... Wow, that was a close play at first and the crowd all watching, who's also biased, <laughs> disagreed and uh, the Boo Birds came out. 0-1 now is the count to Ryan Cash. Runners on second and third with one out. Pitch comes in and it's a called strike. Count is 0-2 now to Ryan Cash. Williams on third, plenty of steel, over plenty of speed over 20 steals at Birmingham Southern this year. A decent fly ball could bring him home from third and tie this game, but Cash has bigger ideas, and the leader in hits for the Range Riders this year could easily put one in the outfield and give the Range Riders the lead. 0-2. It'll miss low and away off the plate. Ben McConnell, you wonder why he's one of the leaders on this team. It's because of that hard-nosed grittiness that he brings to the field. And the skill he had, first pitch there, not messing around, not giving the defense that much of a chance to prepare for it. Just drops down the sack bunt, makes it look so easy. A bluff of a swing there. 
but uh, I don't think he went around, and I don't think we're going to have an appeal over to third where the umpire Tony Prater is standing. Kylie gets a new ball there. Counts now two and two. One out. Cash. In my opinion, one of the best eyes at the plate. That's why he has one of the lowest strikeout rates. I believe the lowest strikeout rate on the team. 2-2 two -two coming in to Ryan Cash. One out, runner on third. Breaking ball misses high. Count goes three and two. Started 0-2 after a swing and a miss and a called strike. And Cash patiently waiting for one to stab at or just for Kylie to put a third runner on this inning via the base on balls. Sam Linscott stands on deck. 3-2. Swung on, carrying out to right field. It's going to be a fair ball, and it will be off the wall. One will score. Brant Broussard was coming home, and the third double in two games for Ryan Cash has given the Range Riders the lead. Boy, is he swinging the bat well. He had two doubles last night, and that one was about, <laughs> it hit off the top panel of the right field wall. That's a 16-foot wall, so each of those panels is eight feet. <sighs> I mean, he, he was probably about four feet away from a home run. His third of the season it would have been. Instead, it's a double. He'll take that just fine. Now he's on second with Sam Linscott at the plate. What can he do with a runner in scoring position? Two to one now, the Glacier Range Riders lead here on a Friday night in their Red Jammer jerseys. Pitch misses low. The Glacier Range Riders all time are one and zero oh in their Jammer jerseys. They beat the defending champion Missoula Paddleheads the first time ever that they wore them. I wonder what red pants would look like alongside the red jerseys. Might be a little bit too much. Check swing doesn't go, but it's in the zone. Called strike count is one and one. One out cash on second, plenty of speed. We'll have to hold and make sure that the ball gets down though, if there is a ball hit to the outfield, as there's just one out. Cash is going for third. He got a great jump and it's a nice hit and run. It's gonna get through, cash will score easily. A perfectly played hit and run. RBI single for Sam Linscott as Cash could have backpedaled home. He had so much time. Three to one here now in the bottom of the third. Linscott follows up the two RBI double from Cash with an RBI hit of his own. Brody Wofford in. One for one, he had that broken bat bloop single into right field. And we've seen Kylie start to struggle here, but no mound visit yet from Jim Riggleman or his pitching coach, David Peterson. Pick out temp over to first. Sliding in safe is Sam Lynn Scott. Brody Wofford out of Rome, Georgia, has been very happy with his performance in the month of July. Stolen base earlier today, as well as that bloop single. Lynn Scott bluffs a steal. And right now, you, you can tell the Range Riders are trying to continually tap into the brain of Kylie, who they have on the back ropes here. Multiple bluff steal attempts. We saw what would have been, I, I'm pretty sure, a successful steal by Ryan Cash if it wouldn't have been a swing from Lynn Scott. This one is a high pop-up. And Brody Wofford will resignedly run half the way to first before Jackson Raper catches it. Two outs now in the bottom of the third. Dean Miller steps up. Dean Miller 0 for 1 today. He rocked a shot to the shortstop, but Jordan Barth picked it clean out of the air. And now Dean Miller will step up for the second time today, 0 for 1.
two home runs on Tuesday night, two home runs on Thursday night. First pitch will just miss his body. Count is 1-0. The one thing, if you're – if you haven't been to a game in person yet um, and you haven't, you know, maybe if you, even if you have and you haven't been close to the field and, and really been kind of on the same level or close to Dean Miller, you don't really realize how solid he is. He is a big dude, clearly pu has put in a ton of work in the weight room. This one's back to the track. Jalen Garcia will catch it on a hop. Right before it gets to the warning track, it is a deep center field here. That one would have been gone to most parts of the ballpark, but Dean Miller will come up empty on that one. A two RBI double from Ryan Cash, an RBI single from Sam Linscott. Three to one, the Glacier Range Riders enter the fourth with the lead. Gabe Wirtz, who hit a home run his first time up, will step up now. Good time almost midway through this game to give you an update from around the Pioneer League. Last night, I mistakenly said that Ogden had clinched. I thought I saw somewhere that somebody said they had clinched the crown. Maybe they were just talking about how Missoula had clinched the North Division, which is definitely true. We saw the Champagne showers out of Great Falls where they clinched it. Counts 1-0, Barros fires it in, and we'll make it 1-1. So let's get you to the actual situation. Ogden wins, they do clinch. That is the situation for them as they're playing the Rocky Mountain Vibes, the last team in the Southern Division. There's a called strike, count goes to 1-2. and two. So Ogden leads with the 27-18 and 18 record, three games up from Grand Junction. If Grand Junction loses, they also would clinch, but Grand Junction is not playing today as they have a rain postponement. They'll play a doubleheader on Sunday instead now. Swung on, cracked to center field. It's going to get down in the gap. Ben McConnell will chase it down and finally field it at the warning track. A stand-up double for Gabe Wirtz. Put him on cycle watch after a homer and a double already. Jackson Raper up. He singled into right field. And his first at bat in the top of the first. The rest of the South looks like Northern Colorado in third, Boise in fourth, and two games back of Boise, 12 games back in first place, the Rocky Mountain Vibes, who have maybe it doesn't look like it with a 14 and 29 record, but they've turned their season around. They were in, in shambles, really, near the end of the month of June before they decided to completely rehaul their roster and put together a team that had a better chance of winning, and they've done just that. They've been about 500 since their change of tactics and personnel. In the North Division, Missoula leads with a 33-11 and 11 record. I mentioned they already clinched the North. They will be going to the playoffs to try and defend their title. 
1 0. This is inside now, 2 0. Great Falls is in second place right now. Seven games back of Missoula. Billings in third at 23 and 20. Idaho Falls also nine and a half games back of Missoula, but they have one more win and one more loss than Billings at 24 and 21. And the Glacier Range Raiders are 16 and 28, rounding out the North Division. Nice breaker that doesn't find the zone. Count will be 3 and 0 oh now for Jackson Raper. I mentioned the postponement in Grand Junction, Colorado. Northern Colorado and the Rockies will not play. Missoula leads 1-0 over Gray Falls in the Electric City over the mountains from us here in the Flathead Valley. Idaho Falls leads Boise 4-2, and Ogden and Rocky Mountain are tied at zero. A four-pitch walk. We'll put Jackson Raper on first. And Jacob Klein comes up to the plate. He rocketed a ball his first time up, but it was just over the left shoulder of the third baseman, Brian Williams, who plucked it out of the air for out number three in the top of the first. If he's able to do something like that and get it past Williams, easily could get two runs in a situation like this. Three to one ball game here, top of the fourth inning. Range Riders lead. Breaking ball, it's in a high fly ball. Ben McConnell will give himself a good run up to it. And it will be an on the money throw to third base. Wirtz bluffed a test, but not going to go all the way against the powerful Ben McConnell. Fly out on the first pitch, gives out number one. And Bryce Jackson now will step in. Jackson hit a high pop fly. That was caught by Brian Williams at third base. Fresh off his first professional home run last night. I'm sure would love to match that with something similar right here. Seeing a righty-lefty matchup, with which does give him some advantage. First pitch coming in from Barros. He'll fire. Misses low. Counts 1-0. and oh. Barros this season actually has done a lot better against lefties, according to the stats that I have in front of me. Lefties are hitting 273 against him, while righties are hitting 396. Said to have missed the zone there. Count goes 2-0. One out. Alongside the red jerseys, there is gold lettering for the Range Riders. And then they got their white pants working. Billings is in their black jerseys with red lettering and gray pants. 2-0 with one out coming in. It goes to 3-0. and Just like Kylie in the bottom of the third. Morrow struggling to key in on the zone, and he had a quick couple words exchanged with Michael Chuckerman, who's over at first base. Chuckerman maybe worried about Barros doing something that's close to a balk. Maybe he's trying to just give him a heads up and say, don't do that. Something like that. That one will miss up and in. It'll be a four-pitch walk to Bryce Jackson, and the bases will be loaded with one out. Jordan Hobie, the designated hitter, will be the man at the plate. Justin Mazzone comes out. He's exchanging some words with his pitcher, and Mike Spears, the pitching coach, is going to come out as well. Noah Barros, I already mentioned a lot about his collegiate career. Transferred into Holy Names University from Glendale Community College. And 
and had a very successful career for the Hawks. D2 school that's located in Oakland, California. Ten career wins over his three seasons played. Started 19 career games. Had two complete game shutouts. One save as well. As he entices a swing and a miss out of Jordan Hobie to start off this crucial at bat in the top of the fourth. 176 career strikeouts to 47 walks for Noah Barros. That was what his co collegiate career had in store for him, including 110 Ks in his senior season, which I mentioned, a Pac West conference record. He just has two strikeouts today. This one swung on and missed. He's ahead 0 2. Other than a double play, the best option is for Barros to get the K here. Sacrifice still a possibility for Billings with Wirtz at third and one out. Raper stands on second. Jackson over at first. The corner infielders are Raper and Jackson. Less speed there than the outfielder Wirtz over at, over at third. 0-2. Oh, said he went. Or said it was a strike. Whatever it was, strike three makes it two outs here in the top of the fourth. And no sacrifices on the board for Jordan Barth. He needs to not get out. A battle of D2 players. I mentioned a D3 matchup in the bottom of the third with Oberlin versus Birmingham Southern. This is... Holy Names versus Augustana. First pitch. Misses the zone. Count goes to 1-0. and oh. Barth, his first time up, struck out swinging against this man, Barros. one is fired in. It's in the zone. Count goes to 1-1. One Swung on and missed as Barth caught chasing. Count is one and two. Barros this close, one pitch away from getting out of this jam. One, two, two outs, bases loaded. Top of the fourth, it's three to one. Glacier leads. Can they hold on to it? We'll see. Swung on, laced into left field. It's a base hit. Getting a stop sign, a late stop sign. And maybe living to regret that stop sign will be number five, Drew Rossi. As a decent chance for Jackson Raber to come in safe. And seeing the throw, it was definitely in time. But it would have been tough for Justin Mazzone to field off a hop. He had to deflect it down with his chest protector. And an RBI single with the bases loaded makes it three to two. Now the tying runs just 90 feet away in Jackson Raper. Noah Barros has thrown 50 pitches, 51 hits the zone on Zach Threlfall. Catcher today for the Billings Mustangs, flied out to center his first time up. Barros still working with the lead here. The 0-1 with two outs will come in. Swing and a miss, he's ahead 0-2. Just like he got ahead of Jordan Barth. It was the bottom of the fourth in Billings, or in Missoula, and Barros' last start where everything came unraveling for Barros, trying to get through his fourth inning here. 0-2, oh called, strike three. Barros gets himself into a one-out bases loaded jam, and he gets out of it with just one run across. The Range Riders still lead, it's three to two. A score line we've seen twice already in this series. Three to two, we head to the bottom of the fourth.
Livingston Morris leads off the bottom of the fourth. It's three to two in favor of the Glacier Range Riders as we enter this half inning of play. Livingston Morris 0 for 1 today. And the first pitch will skip in. Count goes to 1 and 0. The Glacier Range Riders are very thankful in their first month of play that they had artificial turf installed. As this one is looped to shallow right field, it's going to get down a base hit for Livingston Morris. Late swing there from Morris, but just put the exact right sauce on that one where Klein couldn't get to it and Wirtz couldn't chase it down. Justin Mazzone, 0-1. Zone flew out to center. We'll try and get something different here. Kylie sets on the mound. And will fire and hit Justin Mazone in the foot. I think that one hit his left foot, his back leg. So he almost put that one between the legs of Mazone, which is very hard to do, of course, when the legs are not really visible. The five hole isn't really visible on the batter as a pitcher, but that's likely a breaking ball that gets you there. We just had a wild pitch thrown from somebody in the bullpen for Billings that almost took off the head of somebody in the dugout <laughs> as Brian Williams squares to Bonnie pulls back and it's a ball count goes to 1 and 0 right-handed Williams likely will try and bunt again he probably got a bunt signal did the Marietta Georgia native 1-0 no outs runners on first and second and he will square to bunt and he will see that one go low Count goes 2-0 as he pulled back. The Billings Mustangs spent all of their batting practice time yesterday working on bunt defense and infield defense. Likely for this exact situation here as we see Jackson Raper closer to home. Well, almost right on the third base. Uh, just, just ahead of third base, closer to home plate. As we get a pickoff attempt back to second, and he got Livingston Morris to crash down into the bag. No throw from Sean Kiley. The first baseman, Bryce Jackson, is on the fringe of the grass-colored turf. And the front of Raper's foot is there. But it's ball three as that one will go outside. Good vision right now in the second D3-D3 D3 matchup. The first one was won by Williams because he walked on five pitches. This one can have a chance to walk on four, and that'll load the bases with no outs. Again, we'll look to square to bunt, I assume. But also, will he be given that green light? No. On 3-0, he is going to watch it go in. You don't want to waste a possible four-pitch walk just to throw down a sack bunt. However, a get-me-over pitch that you'll likely get from a pitcher on 3-0 is usually the easiest to bunt. So it's that question mark you deal with as a coach. What do you want to do in that situation? The 3-0. Dropped it down, and it goes foul. Count is full now for Brian Williams, who has not been allowed to swing once. And now we'll look down to Nick Hogan to get a sign on 3-2. Sean Kiley has seen the Glacier Range Riders once this season. When he started on June 5th and picked up a no decision in three innings pitched, allowing one earned run. Again, Livingston Morris will be escorted back to the bag by 
Kylie hopping off the mound. He's at 52 pitches thrown. And this 3-2 pitch will decipher how much trouble he is getting himself into here in the bottom of the fourth. 3-2 coming into Brian Williams. Misses high. Three balls, then two strikes, and then a ball. Bases loaded, no outs. Brant Broussard comes up. The last time Brant Broussard came up against the Billings Mustangs with the bases loaded, well, he walked off the game on Wednesday night. Obviously, we are a long way from the bottom of the ninth, but Brant Broussard knew on that night that he wanted to do something better with his opportunity, and here he's given a chance, and he will be given that chance against a new pitcher. We're going to take a quick break. Bases loaded, bottom of the fourth, three to two Glacier leads. Brant Broussard about to come up to face a new pitcher. Don't go anywhere. High stakes at bat coming up next. The new pitcher is Pearson McMahon. McMahon, one of a handful, if that, of players in this league that can say they played triple A baseball. First pitch will miss high to Brant Broussard. The reason why Pearson McMahon, though, has gotten up that high and then dropped this low is because he has started to throw a lot of streaks of wildness. He was the pitcher that put one into the dugout in the bullpen. And then if you were watching him warm up here, he sent his first pitch into the backstop of his on-field warm up to the jeers and sarcastic applause of the fans watching him warm up. One and one after he splashed the strike zone there to Brant Broussard, no outs, bases loaded. Check swing does not go, but it's a called strike. Count goes to one and two. This was the exact count in which Brant Broussard walked off the game Wednesday night. He slapped a hard grounder to Jackson Raper, who was playing over a third. He was playing pinched in, obviously, as the infield needed to prevent the run from scoring in a tie game. And Raper booted it and allowed the game to go to the Range Riders. One, two now coming into Brant Broussard. Swings on it, loops this one into shallow left field, and it will fall. A base hit and a throw home that will be offline. And an RBI single blooped into center field in front of Jalen Garcia. Garcia really could have had a chance to throw to second and get a force out on what would have gone down as an 8-4 fielder's choice. But he opted to go home to try and catch the man at third, Livingston Morris, who was staying close to the bag for a possible tag up. 
And it just doesn't work out. An RBI loop single for Brant Broussard. And it's 4-2 to two here. The base is still loaded with no outs as Pearson McMahon now moves into a righty-lefty matchup. That would advantage Ben McConnell. Home plate umpire says he went on that first pitch. So call it a swing and a miss to make the count 1-0. and oh. Ben McConnell this season has had the bases loaded six times for him at the plate. He's only come up with one hit in those situations. 0-1 coming in now to McConnell. Swings and misses at that one. He's behind 0-2 now. Bram Broussard also fell behind in his count. So ben McConnell going to try and do what he can to keep it alive because he knows he has the heart of the lineup behind him, including Ryan Cash, who has been electric all season but has found some extra base power in the past two games. 0-2. Misses up and away. Count goes to one and two. Let me back up what I was saying about Pierce McMahon in terms of his control issues that we've seen from him. In Kane County, where he started the season in the American Association, he had 12 walks to seven strikeouts in his 11 innings pitch. That's part of the reason why Kane County ran out of room on the roster for him. One, two. Swung on. It's a broken bat blooper, but it's going to get into the glove of Jackson Raper over at third. It deadened the bat there. And Ben McConnell has no problem with giving a little more damage to that bat as he was frustrated with himself not being able to come up with anything better on that bases loaded no out situation. But Ryan Cash stepping in now. A two RBI double for Cash. His last time up. That gave the Glacier Range Riders the lead. Lynn Scott added to it with an RBI single that scored cash. And now Brant Broussard's RBI single made it 4-2 to two here. One out, bases loaded. Runner at third's Mazone. First pitch up and away. And this is the guy that could take advantage of a pitcher that may have a hard time keying in on the strike zone. It was in 2021 where Pearson McMahon made it all the way to Triple A, as I've talked about, with the Rochester Red Wings, which is in the Wa Washington Nationals organization. That one is a called strike. Looked like it could have been inside, but benefit of the doubt goes from Craig Struble to Pearson McMahon. Count goes to one and one. One out for Ryan Cash. Batting in the left-handed batter's box is the switch hitter. McMahon sets and fires. That one almost hits Ryan Cash. You can tell the speed at which Pearson McMahon is throwing is quite up there. Part of the reason why he has that stuff that can brought him so close to playing in the majors. Also spent part of last season with the Harrisburg Senators, the AA affiliate of the Nationals. 2-1, one, one out, the pitch. Misses low and inside. One ball will move everybody up 90 feet. A strike will push it full. Originally, McMahon was drafted in the fourth round of the draft by the Colorado Rockies, where he started his professional career. And he started actually in Boise, when Boise was the high A affiliate, or the low A affiliate of the Rockies. Misses outside. Cash gets an RBI the easy way. Five-pitch walk brings home Justin Mazzone. Everybody moves up, and now the number three batter, Sam Linscott, will step in. That was all the way back in 2017 that Pearson McMahon started his professional career with the Boise Hawks. And then was traded after the 2018 season to the Nationals organization where he spent 2019 in the, the A and the low A affiliate of the Nationals. As that one misses outside. If you don't know who the A and low A affiliate of the Nationals are, well, one of them is the Auburn Double Days, which is in the now defunct New York Penn League. And the other one is the Hagerstown Suns.
Swung on, hit over to third, and it's beyond the dive of Jackson Raper. One coming home, Brant Broussard, boogie into the plate. A two RBI single from Sam Linscott, and it's seven to two. The game has been broken wide open as the Glacier Range Riders got bases loaded with no outs and they've been able to cash in on it. Williams scored on that one as well as Brant Broussard. Cash moves up to second. Lynn Scott, two more RBIs on his belt. He's got three RBIs on the day. Brody Wofford with a 7-2 lead, one out in the bottom of the fourth. Runners are going. It's a double steal. Everybody's going to be safe. I don't know if Threlfall just wasn't ready for it or what. Maybe it was just a great jump and... All he thought he could get was Linscott, who was maybe delaying. They're pushing the infield in right now in a 7-2 ball game, trying to prevent the run from scoring with one out. Swing and a miss from Wofford makes it 1-1. One one. I'll update the scoreboard here as it has dramatically changed. <laughs> and I don't want to confuse you too much. It is 7-2 here in the bottom of the fourth. One out, runners on second and third. The thing that double steal does, as well as put two runners in scoring position, is it takes away a more routine sacri or a more routine double play opportunity. That's a swing and a miss, a strikeout will work for Pearson McMahon here. For all the walks to his name, he does have a really good strikeout ability as well. In his four seasons his four seasons in the minors, he had 131 Ks. Had some really good seasons early on, but you can see as you go down his minor league career, the balls went up each season for him and in 2021 that he spent in triple a and double a he had a strikeout to walk ratio of just 37 to 30 in favor of the strikeouts in 48 innings pitched 2-2 Two -two coming into Brody Wofford with runners at second and third swings on it hit over to first Pierce Jackson makes a gr or Bryce Jackson excuse me makes a great play to dive down and grab that one, but Ryan Cash will score from third. It's an RBI ground out from Brody Wofford. Again, great play from Bryce Jackson, who was out of position being pinched in there. But not much you can do about that one. Even if he was at his regular position, still wouldn't have been much of a chance for him to make the throw home to get the speedy Ryan Cash. 8-2 to two in the bottom of the fourth. Both of these teams in this fourth inning have been able to stuff the bases. But the Billings Mustangs only able to take advantage and get one run off that situation. Glacier Range Riders on the other side, they have poured in five in this inning. 0-1, two outs. Dean Miller could put one more in as he's got Lynn Scott in scoring position. Misses low. A battle of two guys that have been drafted by major league teams that have played in minor in affiliated minor league systems. Talk plenty about what has brought Dean Miller to this point in his career, but you can see he is really hitting his stride in Glacier. Check swing, doesn't go. And the first base umpire agrees. The ball almost escaped beyond the body of Zach Threlfall, but he keeps it close to him. Nothing much for Sam Linscott to try and do there in terms of getting home on a pass ball or a wild pitch. Two and one now, the count for Dean Miller. He's hit two really, really well-struck balls. But a line out to center and a line out to short. That one hits the inside of the strike zone. Miller shakes his head at it. Count goes 2-2. Two, two, two outs. Bottom of the fourth. 8-2 to two is the score in this ball game. 
as Pearson McMahon will throw his 25th pitch since entering for Sean Kiley. Up near the head of Dean Miller. Count goes full at three and two. Started all the way in that bullpen warm up for Pearson McMahon when he almost took out one of his own players in the dugout located behind the bullpen catcher area. The wildness has only hurt him. Three, two, two outs. Called strike three. Dean Miller, I think, more upset with himself as well as at the umpire. And that is how this inning will end. It's a five-run bottom of the fourth. Eight to two, the Glacier Range Riders lead the Billings Mustangs. The leadoff man is the leadoff batter, and we'll see pitch number one come in for a ball. Noah Barros still out there, 53 pitches thrown in his first four innings. And now it's 1-0 and coming into Jalen Garcia, who is 0 for 2 today. And a swing and a miss makes it 1-1. One and one. Swing and a miss again. Count goes to one and two. Noah Barros was a week six selection as North Division Pitcher of the Week for the Pioneer League. He pitched a solid, solid outing. Seven innings, six strikeouts, just one walk for him. And only allowed one earned run in that time. That was against the Great Falls Voyagers a couple weeks ago. En route to a crucial July 3rd win over Great Falls that they needed to make sure they didn't get swept by the Voyagers on the road in that week leading up to the 4th of July. 2-2 two -two pitch coming in. Misses high, count goes 3-2. Barros now has the luxury of working with a six-run lead here. Garcia, the Billings native, will see the payoff pitch. No outs here, bases emptying, empty. Leading off the top of the fifth. Swung on and missed. Noah Barros retires Jalen Garcia on strikes. And Aiden Nagel will step up. 0 for 2 is Nagel.
Swing and a miss from Nagel. To start off that at bat, 0-1, one out, base is empty. Leadoff batters coming into this game actually against Noah Barros were hitting 375. Maybe one of the places that he wants to improve, or at least they were reaching at a 375 percentage. A one coming in, swung on, back to Barros. He fields, and he flips over to first. Two gone on just eight pitches. Gabe Wirtz, two for two today. He's halfway to a cycle. As our home plate umpire, Craig Struble, is saying something. Don't know what he was saying. He, he came up and Got about halfway to Barros from home plate. And then said something to the Billings dugout, turned around, said something to the Glacier dugout. Neither dugout seems mad at what he's saying, but just wanting to get on with the game, I assume. Counts 0-1 after the strike called there to Wirtz. The 10th pitch of the inning for Barros, his 63rd. Good chance if he gets out of it soon, we'll see him in the next inning. He'll miss on that one. Count goes to 1-1. One one. Great Friday night crowd here. One of the best I think we've seen at Flathead Field. As lots of Range Riders fans wearing their Friday reds. Breaking ball down to an E goes Gabe Wirtz. It's one and two. Boros, the right hander. Fires, ooh, that breaking ball just went high of the zone. Just in the zone behind the plate. Always will give it an extra half second to try and frame it if he thinks he did what it took to reach the zone. Counts two and two now. Swung on, a high fly ball out to right field. Backing up is Lynn Scott. He's gonna get to the wall. And make the grab right there. Gabe Wirtz has slung the bat today, but that one comes up about 10 feet short of his second home run of the game. It's a blank and a 1-2-3 inning thrown by Noah Barros. We'll be right back for the bottom of the fifth.
Livingston Morris leads off the bottom of the fifth here. And I'll tell you what, Livingston Morris, there's something about him when he leads off an inning. This season, he's hitting 567 leading off innings. And that is, that is coming into this game. He let off a last inning, which obviously resulted in a five-run rally for the Glacier Range Riders, and he got a hit there. So that's even above that. He's reached 18 out of 31 times. Foul ball there makes it one and one. With the bases empty, Livingston Morris is batting 333. And a swing and a miss puts him behind one, two. Ball pushes the count to two and two. Livingston Morris out of Woodstock, Georgia. Finished up his career this spring at Georgia Gwinnett College. He set the single season home run record for the Grizz. That one in the dirt. No way he did not go. Barely took that bat off his shoulder. Three two coming into Morris. Swings on it, foul ball off of his foot. I don't know if I mentioned it last inning. I think I might have mentioned Brenton Davis is the new third baseman. What I failed to mention, however, is that he came in for Ryan Cash because Brian Williams, who was over at third to start, moved over to second. And they're giving Cash the rest of the day off. That one misses the zone, but not by much. If I'm Pearson McMahon or Zach Threlfall, I am not liking that call from home plate umpire Craig Struble. I'm a little off home plate. You have a better view from where our camera is than I do. But of course, nothing beats the high definition of being here in person. And I'll tell you what, did not look like I missed the plate by much. First pitch will come in to Justin Mazzone and it'll skip good field. And block by the catcher, Threlfall. Count goes to 1-0. and Mazone, the left-hander versus the right-hander. This is his first time seeing McMahon. Does that one will miss up and away to Mazone? Count goes to 2-0. and McMahon came into the ball game, and the first batter he saw was Brant Broussard, who singled off of him. Then it was McConnell that was able to fly out for the first out of the inning. That pitch misses off the plate. And when it rains, it pours right now for Pearson McMahon, who has missed by a lot, missed by a little, but right now the home plate umpire just saying he's missing on almost everything. After, that one's a strike, count goes three and one. After McConnell flied out for out number one, it was Ryan Cash that walked, Sam Lins got with a two RBI single, and then the RBI ground out from Brody Wofford. And it was finally a strikeout for Pearson McMahon to get out of that dreaded inning for the Billings Mustangs. A called strike there makes it three and two. No outs here. Runner on first is Livingston Morris. Misses low and away, and it'll be two walks to start off this bottom of the fifth. And I actually went to start and, and try and pull it up how many walks the Range Riders had in the first couple games between these two squads, and it wasn't an overwhelming amount at all. Just 10 walks compared to 22 
that the Range Riders gave to the Billings Mustangs. Billings, for the 1-3 and three record they have in this series thus far, they kept those free passes in check, but between Kylie and McMahon, the free passes have killed them. Called strike there to Brian Williams, who I mentioned stays in the game. We'll play second base for the time being. Counts 0-1. Almost have hit their total in the first four games of this series in just this one game. There's a called strike. Pearson McMahon, nice stuff there to get ahead 0-2. Again, if you're a Billings fan or if you're a fan of Pearson McMahon, I'm not trying to trash him at all. I'm just trying to give that the story on what his career has done. He clearly has good stuff. There's no doubt about it that he's a great pitcher, as this one's foul. But to contextualize it for the Range Riders fans and parents and everybody else that may be less clued into looking up stats or, or seeing Pearson McMahon before this, there has been streaks of wildness. And baseball can be a cruel game where a couple bad games, your career could be done. Pearson McMahon, though, resurfacing in Billings, Montana, where he tries to keep his big league dream alive. One, two, no outs. And again, as the Glacier Range Riders broadcaster, I don't have necessarily the next level of stats on McMahon or the knowledge whether he dealt with an injury or anything like that. This is a base hit. And a stop sign will be put up. But Brian Williams, good contact there. And he is able to load the bases. The second inning in a row that the Glacier Range Riders have loaded the bases with no outs. Brant Broussard had this exact same situation against this exact same pitcher. And looped an RBI single into left field. His first time up against Kylie, he walked. So he's reached base every chance he's had today. Bases loaded, no outs. Glacier with a chance to add to their lead. First pitch swinging, and it will be just a ground out as not in position to make the force out at second was Jordan Barth, an RBI ground out. Makes it 9-2 to two in favor of the Glacier Range Riders. Brand Broussard now two RBIs on the day. A play by, Jan by Jordan Klein over there to prevent that from being maybe two runs. And it wasn't his fault that the play was not ready to be made at second. Williams moves up to scoring position at second. Mazone moves to third. Ben McConnell now will step up as the umps will reconfigure their alignment. That's the reason for that brief pause and play. Nine to two here. Ben McConnell trying to make it double digits. Brenton Davis, the defensive substitute standing on deck. First pitch swinging from McConnell, carrying out to left field. Mazone will tag from third, and it's a sack fly to score. Justin Mazzone and make it 10 to two in favor of the Glacier Range Riders. Brian Williams at second did not tag up. And Brenton Davis will have him stay at second with lots of speed there. We haven't got a chance to see much of that speed. I keep on talking about it and maybe I'm just making stuff up. I've seen him over at first do a lot of dancing, try and keep pitchers on their toes, but he hasn't tried to swipe a bag. First pitch up and away to Brenton Davis. Ryan Cash has not got a lot of time to chill out and watch a game, and of course that's mostly the way that he wants it, but I'm sure he appreciates a little chance to rest the bones. Foul ball. Glacier Range Riders... Right now taking advantage of walks, but they also have seven hits to their name. But ten runs on seven hits, not a good efficiency for the pitching staff for the Billings Mustangs. One and one is the count, two outs. 
Brian Williams looking to go on most contact. Swing and a miss. Makes it one and two for the graduate of Bellevue University, Brenton Davis. Spent the first part of this season with the Missoula Paddleheads before they traded him to Glacier. The Raymond, a Nebraska native, has been one of the catching options for the Range Riders, but he's slotted in at a lot of places defensively. Missing on the inside. Pearson McMahon started to walk off to head to the dugout, but not getting the call by the home plate umpire, Craig Strubel. 2-2, two, two, two outs, runner on second. 10-2 is our score here. The Range Riders have hit double figures here in the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss. Davis goes down on strikes. And it's a two-run bottom of the fifth by the Glacier Range Riders. A sack fly by Ben McConnell and an RBI ground out by Brant Broussard. They take advantage of the bases loaded, no outs situation to get to double figures. We head to the sixth. It's 10-2. Glacier leads. Back here in the top of the sixth inning. Two runs on one hit last inning for the Glacier Range Riders. They lead 10 to two as we start the top of the sixth and the former Scottsdale Community College Vaccaro. Vaccaro? Some mascot that starts with a V. I think it's Vaccaro. Swing and a miss. Noah Barros is back out on the mound for his sixth inning of work. He's eligible for the win now if Glacier can Hold on without retiring the lead. And he mustards that one in there. And not swung on, called the ball. Count goes to one and one. He's got 68 pitches under his belt. Nobody warming right now in the Glacier bullpen with this eight run lead for Noah Barros. Swung on over to first. Brody Wofford will field and throw to Noah Barros, who catches it on the run and taps first. 3-1 ground out is good for out number one. Jacob Klein coming up. 0 for 2 today is Klein. Glendale Community College, where the, the Vaqueros, where Noah Barros started his post-high school baseball career is not to be confused with Scottsdale Community College, which has one of the greatest mascots in all of sports, the Scottsdale Artichokes, and they're led by Artie the Artichoke. Strike there makes it one and one. I think that, that that's a lot of trivia questions. If you get deep into kind of trivia 
question, mascot question. Uh, one that people will try and stun you with almost all the time is, well, who's the artichokes? And it's Scottsdale Community College. So now roll it X that one, put it in the back of your brain. And whip that one out at the next party you're at when you're talking about weird mascots. One, two. Misses high counts, two and two. The Glacier Range Riders, of course, referencing the pre-National Park patrollers of the range here, instituted by Teddy Roosevelt to protect the land from wildfires, poachers. That's a foul ball. It looked fair to me. I think that was just right over the bag, and I thought it was on the ground. But it did not miss by much. Let's say that. 2-2. Two, two. One out up coming into Jacob Klein. And he swings and misses. Barros has two down after the K. Up comes Bryce Jackson, 0 for 1 today. He does have a walk. Noah Barros will throw pitch number 76. And it will be smacked down the left field line and foul for Bryce Jackson. Talking about mascots, the Billings Mustangs. I wish I could kind of add more to their mascot conversation, but I, I don't know. They, they have always been, I'm pretty sure, the Billings Mustangs. Is that one will miss up high? Count goes to one and one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they've always been the Billings Mustangs, and that's why they kind of have a classic look in their circular logo that you see on our scoreboard in the bottom left there. This one is hammered out to right field. Backing up is Lynn Scott and a home run from Bryce Jackson. His second home run in as many games. He now has two home runs in his professional career. And despite the losing record for the Mustangs here at Flathead Field, Jackson is enjoying himself in Northwest Montana. It's now 10 to three in the top of the sixth after Bryce Jackson goes yard with a solo shot. That one was absolutely smoked off the bat of the first baseman. Swing and a miss as Jordan Hovey will try and give some sort of encore performance to that solo blast. For Jackson, the batting average hasn't quite turned up yet, but he's still fairly early into his rookie campaign. So that can sway a lot. And the power there, if you can hammer it and play defense, which we've seen him play really good defense over at first, then they'll find a spot for you. Especially, I mean, we saw that Livingston Morris splashed onto the scene. He had a great batting average to start. Then he kind of, the pitching kind of caught up with him. So that one misses away. Counts two and one. He kind of plateaued off his initial surge coming into the league as more people got scouting reports, film, whatever on him to figure out how to approach him. But he can still hammer the ball really hard. He comes up, he has good at-bats, and he's found a spot in the six hole in this lineup. Bryce Jackson. Also batting in the six hole. As actually Brennan Mentz, the broadcaster for the Billings Mustangs. When we were talking about Bryce Jackson, what he's done already this season, as this was my first time seeing him in this series. He, he kind of compared him to Livingston Morris. And a called strike three to get out of the top of the six. The solo home run by Bryce Jackson, but that's all she wrote in the top of the six. We'll be right back. It's 10 to three. We head to the bottom of the frame.
Pearson McMahon has come in and pitched two full innings. And has not had a inning that he can really hang his hat on thus far. Came into a really tough situation in his first outing with bases loaded, no outs. No pitcher wants to come into that. And last inning, he allowed two earned runs. Called ball there, makes the count 1-0. and oh. Sam Linscott, who's two for three with three RBIs. Nice one into the zone there from McMahon. Count goes to 1-1. One and one. That one will miss high. Count goes to 2-1. and one. A little bit more about the Billings Mustangs. I mentioned I don't know much about the origins of their name, but I am 95-plus percent sure that They've had that name since their inception in 1948. Foul ball. This is their 69th season of baseball. And in that 1948 year, they were independent. As that one misses, count goes three and two. And then they entered affiliated ball where they were really all over the place. It was originally class C from 48 to 62. And in that time, that one misses high. And it is a said no swing and Lynn Scott will walk. They started out off as affiliates of the Brooklyn Dodgers for three years, then the Pittsburgh Pirates, the St. Louis Cardinals. And it was with the Cardinals that they switched independent for a brief stint before coming back in and being an affiliate of the Seattle Pilots and the KC Royals for just a few years before they affiliated with the Cincinnati Reds in 1974. And that, that's the reason why a lot of fans in Billings, so we get a swing and a miss there, despite being closer in terms of distance to Minnesota, the Twins, Seattle, the Mariners, obviously Colorado, and the Rockies. There is a lot more fans of the Cincinnati Reds, really, than any of those clubs. As this one's cracked up the middle, a base hit. And Brody Wofford is aboard on a single. The Range Riders are just cooking right now. The Billings Mustangs have the most Pioneer League titles in history. Part of that is because of longevity. But in general, through those Cincinnati Red year, Reds years from 74 on, they have put together good squads. And it's hard in affiliated minor league baseball to really put titles on something because somebody wins – but affiliated ball necessarily isn't about the team success because when you're an affiliated, it's very easy to move up the ladder. Somebody's doing good, boop, they're up to the next level. That one misses inside on Dean Miller. He's 0 for 3 tonight after his two home run last night, two home run game last night. Line out, line out, and a strikeout for Miller. He's ahead 1-0 here. Bases, or a base are not loaded yet, but they could be loaded with no outs for the third inning in a row. If Miller is able to get aboard first and not get anybody across the plate. That one misses up near his head. He ducks out of the way. Now it's 2-0. and Most recent Pioneer League championship for the Billings Mustangs was in 2014. They've only won three PBL championships in this century, 2001, 2003, and 2014. That one skips in the dirt. It's 3-0. One ball will load the bases with no outs for the third consecutive inning against the Billings Mustangs. Warm-up starting to go down in the bullpen for a right-hander standing up. And as the plan today was always for Jim Riggleman to have Pierce McMahon piggyback off of Sean Kiley's start. 
Get me over pitch does just that. It gets in the zone. Count goes to three and one. Lynn Scott on second. Plenty of speed. Wofford on first. He's got neat, seek, sneaky speed for his size. And you saw that on his <laughs> funky steal of a base that he had earlier in this game. 3-1 coming into Dean Miller. A hitter's count for a man that can pound it. Skips in the dirt. He'll take a walk to load the bases. And Livingston Morris will swagger to the plate. Livingston Morris, this is just his fourth trip to the plate in his professional career with the bases loaded. He is one for four. As a range rider with the bases loaded. We're going to have a conference at the mound. Might be buy some time for your pitcher. But it also might be come up with a game plan right now. As this is the third straight inning. Bases loaded, no outs. Home plate umpire Craig Struble knows that this might be a time buying technique just as much as anything else. And he comes up to break up the huddle. Livingston Morris will come up. Because Morris has the power to put the ball, ball over the fence, I will mention that the Glacier Range Riders do not have a grand slam since their opening series against the Colorado Springs team, the Rocky Mountain Vibes, and they have never, never hit a Grand Slam here at Flathead Field. No team has hit a Grand Slam here at Flathead Field. First pitch misses high. Count goes to 1-0. and oh. Livingston Morris had the first run scored, as well as I believe the first hit at this facility for a range rider. And now in the red jerseys, Maybe could add to the lore of the stadium just a little bit more. That one gets through the five hole of the catcher. Threll fall, but not too far. And Lynn Scott says, I got no outs. I'm not going to get a first one doing something stupid and going to home there. 2-0 is the count to Livingston Morris, who is one for two. Hitters count with the bases loaded. Swings on it. A chance for two, five, four, and no, not in time to first. It will be an RBI fielder's choice. And for Livingston Morris legging that one out, that's a crucial because you do not get an RBI if you ground into a double play and a run scores. You do get an RBI if you ground into a fielder's choice. That's exactly what happens. Lynn Scott scores. Miller's thrown out on the front half of that attempted double play. Morris uses his speed down the line to beat it out. 11 to three now, the Range Riders lead. Justin Mazzone has runners on the corners with one out. First pitch misses outside. It seems like Jim Riggleman is gonna give Pearson McMahon another batter here. As we do have warmups going on in the pen, like I mentioned, they're getting more serious down there, but they didn't pop that pitcher up until either runners on second or third, or maybe they didn't pop them up until right when they could tell that the bases were going to be juiced. This one's a slow dribbler down the third baseline. It's going to be a fair ball. Raper comes up to field. He throws. It's safe over there at first, and Livingston Morris gets all the way to third. An RBI infield single for Justin Mazzone. It's 12-3 to three in favor of the Glacier Range Riders. Everything going right for the kids in red. Jackson Raver was put in an incredibly tough situation there because that one was dribbling perfectly down that third base line. And because this field is artificial turf, there's not going to be any weird bumps in the dirt or, you know, a little rock here or there or whatever that's going to make it turn and go foul. If, he, if you see the spin as that one, I think, skips off the helmet of Brian Williams, but he wears it like a champ. 
Bases will be loaded once again for the Glacier Range Riders. And before I can even explain the last play, this at bat is over. And that will be the day for Pearson McMahon. We'll give you his final line when we get back here. But all I can say is it is a rough day to be a Billings Mustangs pitcher. I feel bad for whoever's coming in now because the Range Riders are feeling quite hot right now. Brant Broussard will come up with the bases loaded and one out. When we come back after the new pitcher warms up, don't go anywhere. You're watching the Range Riders leading 12-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth. The new pitcher is McLean Harris, right-hander out of Young Harris College, has finished up his collegiate career this spring. And for Harris, he has pitched solidly this season. A 5.68 ERA. This is his 11th appearance, 12 and two-thirds innings pitched. And he has five strikeouts to four walks. He's not going to overwhelm you with his power pitching, but he does have a good skill at getting weak contact. Brant Broussard up at the plate. One for two today is Brant Broussard. He's got a walk and a single. First pitch swinging. A high fly ball out to right field. Should be enough to score the runner. Livingston Morris from third. And it will be. He comes in standing up. Sack fly for Brant Broussard. Advancing. Tagging up is Mazone to third from second as well. Ben McConnell will now come up with two outs and runners on the corners. Williams, the man over at first, did not tag up from first. He wasn't going to test Gabe Wirtz's arm that much. Ben McConnell had a sack bunt and a sack fly this game. And he sees a strike there. The Glacier Range Riders lead the Pioneer League in sack bunts. That shows part of where Nick Hogan's brain is at in terms of kind of his strategy, his game plan that he brings in with teams. Be able to play small ball when the situation depends on it. And Brant Broussard, or I mean Ben McConnell, was able to get that sack bunt down. I thought he might have beat it out over at first, but anyway, it did not go against his batting average. 0-2, oh, two. two outs. That one will be hit to second. Fielded and thrown on target and in time for out number three. Well, three more runs across for Glacier that inning. They're feeling really good right now. Just nine hits, but 13 runs. They lead by 10 as we head to the seventh.
We're in the top of the seventh, and Noah Barros will come out for his seventh inning of work. He's got 83 pitches thus far. And I believe we have Eddie McCabe coming somewhere. He might be entering out in left field. Just heard it announced over the PA. But I will double check with our official scorer who is more in tune to that as I was not looking at the number of the new left fielder. This one's a slow dribbler down the third baseline and Brenton Davis will come up and field it foul. Count goes to 0-1-1. I said 84 pitches for Noah Barros now. Let me give you the final stat line on the two pitchers that we've seen exit for the Billings Mustang. Sean Kiley finishes with three innings pitched. Four hits against him, which is not bad, but the six earned runs, including two strikeouts, three walks, and one hit by pitch. His ERA will not take lightly to that outing. And Pearson McMahon also struggled out there coming into a bases loaded no out situation. And he finished with two and a third innings pitched, five hits allowed, seven earned runs against him, two strikeouts, five walks, and a hit by pitch. 0 oh 2. Make it stay at 0 oh 2. One of the cool things about the Billings Mustangs organization is for the entirety of their 69 season franchise, every single game has been played in the same location. Originally, it was Cobb Field. That one misses. Count goes to one and two. And in 2007, they finished up playing at Cobb Field and built Dealer Park as we get a swing and a miss and a strikeout of the number eight batter, Jordan Barth. And Zach Threlfall will come up now over two today. In 2014, they actually switched ownership and was bought by a new group that owns a team in Wilmington as I believe the Quad Cities as well. If I'm remembering that correctly. Swing and a miss there. Count goes to 0 and 1. Of course, Jim Riggleman is the manager of the squad, and, and I've talked plenty about him as we get a swing and a miss to make the count 0 and 2 against Thrallfall. But if you don't know who Jim Riggleman is, which <laughs> you might, you might not, depending on how big of a baseball fan of an MLB fan you are, but he has <laughs> spent a lot of time. Uh, coaching major league teams. He started his professional managerial career in, well, as a manager, as a head man. His first year was in 1992 as the San Diego Padres manager for three seasons. That one will miss. Count goes to two and two. Okay, so I do have the official word on what the defensive substitution. Before I talk a little bit more about Riggleman, I will say that Dean Miller's the new first baseman. He moves from left to first. Brody Wofford's going to get the rest of the day off. And speaking of, this one's over to Miller, who comes in from his newly acquired first base position and will catch that one for out number two. Losing track as I talk about Jim Riggleman, who has played, who has coached 1,630 games in the majors. And <laughs> impressive, a long and impressive career. That one will miss inside to Garcia, leadoff man. Counts 0 and 1. Now it's 0 and 2. No 
it's one and one. Sorry, I said that first one missed inside. And now it's one and one, two outs, base is empty. 13 to three is our score here. Garcia will see that one, miss outside, count is two and one. The other places where Jim Riggleman managed, besides where he started his MLB managerial career, with the Padres, the Chicago Cubs for four seasons, the Mariners for just one season, three seasons as the Nationals manager, and then most recently with the Cincinnati Reds, and that's where he at least began to have some understanding of the minor league system for the Reds, which, as I mentioned earlier, was where the Billings Mustangs were usually – the first stop out of the draft for players that sign with the team is either Billings or the Arizona Complex League at that point in 2018 when Riggleman was the head man in Cincy. And you want to know some, some more of his pipelines to different things that he's got going on here in the Pioneer League and with his team. I mentioned Bryce Jackson, a Frostburg State University alum. Well, guess who else is a Frostburg University State, State University alum? Jim Riggleman. This one's hit to right field, and Sam Linscott will make the catch on the run. So two Frostburg State guys joining forces in Billings, but right now everything is going against them and their squad. We, we will stretch in the mid of, middle of the seventh inning. It's 13-3. The Glacier Range Riders lead. we got some defensive substitutes to report for the Billings Mustangs, and it's uh, the end of the day for Jalen Garcia, who in that last inning finished with a fly out to right field. Mason Dennison, who usually plays infield, will get his first cracks as a left fielder, and the new center fielder is Nagel, who moves over from left. Cold strike. To start off the at-bat for Brenton Davis, his second at-bat of the ballgame after coming on as a defensive substitute. Now he's behind 0-2 after that one is a called strike. Misses off the plate. Count goes to 1-2. and two. Brenton Davis wanted to protect and try and stab at that one, but he held back. Finishing out what I was saying about Jim Riggleman, went to Frostburg State and played professional ball as this one's hit out to left center field. Backing up is Nagel and all the way to the track to make the catch as Brenton Davis came awfully close to going yard there. 
Gets an applause from the crowd. As Sam Linscott comes up now. After his all-star season in the Cape Cod Baseball League, he did go pro. Riggleman was drafted by the Dodgers in 1974, and that one is hammered. Out to right center field, backing up. It'll hop off the wall. Lynn Scott will slow motion dive into second base. A double for Sam Lynn Scott, who has been cracking the bat tonight. He is three for four on the evening. And now we get Eddie McCabe coming in. Mentioned he came in as a defensive substitute in the last half inning when he came into left field. As Dean Miller moved from left to first base to give Brody Wofford the rest of the day off. So he technically came into Brody Wofford's spot in the lineup. Riggleman topped out at the AAA level, never made it to the MLB, and retired at the age of 28 in 1981, and then began to work on his professional coaching career. And after nine seasons as an assistant, that's when he got his opportunity to be an MLB at the major league level. I mentioned he had one season with the Mariners. As this one's hit out to right field, scampering in to make the play on it is the right fielder, Wirtz. And he grabs it for out number two here as McCabe flies out to right. For those who are interested in the Mariners, they have won another game. They are rolling. Range Riders not as hot at the Mariners as the Mariners, but both squads look Looking pretty good. So if you're somebody in the uh, Flathead Valley area, closest team is the Mariners. And with, with no affiliated team in the Valley before and no team to kind of sway the rooting interest like we have, obviously, when I talked about in Billings with the kind of anomaly of Reds fans there because of the Billings affiliation with Cincinnati for so long. Most fans here, I would guess, are mostly Mariners fans, but it, it also is really hard to tell in general. Growing up in Helena, Montana, which is four hours south of here, and it's a, a town that has the Brewers affiliate. There were definitely some Brewers fans because of that, and the minor league team in the PBL was named the Helena Brewers. But still, when you don't have a clear-cut team to support, as that one's fouled, count goes one and one you tend to – Use whatever logic you can find uh, to find who your team is. And sometimes it's geography. That's kind of one of those things that people lean on. But sometimes it's, you know, my grandparents went to college in Pittsburgh, so I'm a Pirates fan. Or, you know, my best friend moved here from Texas, and I'm a Rangers fan. I it's... It's chaos like that, and, and there's fans all over the place or whatever, and there's a lot of fans that, you know, support teams at the right time. I know there's a good amount of New England Patriots fans in Montana, which doesn't make a lot of sense until you realize they are people that are friends with me in my same age group. They grew up with the Patriots dominating, and it's fun to watch your team win. So if that's what you latch on to, then that's what you latch on to. One, two, two outs. Unfortunately, I know nobody's a Mariners fan because of that reason. <laughs> and not in the past 20 years. Oof. Two and two is the count now with two outs to Dean Miller. He's got a runner on second. Thirteen to three is our score here in the bottom of the seventh as the Friday night crowd. Enjoying watching the Jammer Jersey Range Riders run all over the Billings Mustangs. It'll miss low and it'll go full for Dean Miller. Miller is 0 for 3 tonight, but he did reach on a walk his last time up. And he's had a pretty good series for himself. Probably the Range Rider that has struggled the most today. And 
has not worked against Glacier. As he was the offensive powerhouse last night and on Tuesday night, but an 0 for 3 night for him is doing the job for everybody else. 3-2, two, two outs. Swings on it, and it gets through the five hole, but a spinorama on target. Wow, Jordan Barth made a great play to keep concentration on that one as it was leapt over by Sam Linscott. Then he fielded it, spin, spun all the way around, 360, put it close enough to Bryce Jackson to stretch on and make the play for out number three. Linscott doubles, but that's all she wrote in the seventh. It's 13 to three. We head to the eighth. Well, the day is done for Noah Barros, and what an outing it was for him. And what a storyline we have for Brett Barnett here who's going to come on and throw some pitches against his former team, the team that cut him midway through this season, the Indianola, Indianola, Iowa native in his rookie season. Started with the Billings Mustang before. Funny enough, they actually gave his number up, and I had that in the virtual scorebook that I keep. I had, when I was looking at who was number 39, replacing the starter that was Sean Kiley. The 39 that I had on my virtual roster here that I hadn't updated yet clearly was Brett Barnett. They gave up his number to Pearson McMahon, but right now Barnett's on the winning side of this contest, and I'm sure he'll be pitching with a little extra sauce on it. 13 to three is our score here. And let's get to that Noah Barros final line, a seven inning outing for the Glacier right-hander. Five hits allowed, three runs all earned, eight strikeouts and two walks, no hit by pitches for Noah Barros. A solid outing, he had the offense back him up and he was able to pitch the way he wanted. And right there, Brett Barnett starts off his outing with a called strike in the zone, count goes to 0-1. The batter is Aiden Nagel, the new center fielder. If we get all the way around the number one spot in the lineup, as I mentioned, uh, it was Dennison that technically went in for Garcia's spot. And a swing and a miss there as the breaking ball fooled Nagel. It's 0-2. This one swung on, hit over to second. It'll be Brian Williams' first chance to make a play at second. And he throws just on target as Dean Miller. No, it's not Dean Miller over there. I believe that's John Pardue that is the new first baseman. Going to double check and see if we catch, catch number 32 over there, which is what John Pardue is wearing tonight. But he is welcomed to the action <laughs> with a tough chance over there, but he did a good job to make do on it. And a little bit of a sketchy throw from Brian Williams, but it, again, got the job done.
Pardue will probably bat for Dean Miller if we get to see him bat. Swing and a miss and then a ball. Makes it one and one. One out. Top of the eighth here. It is a 13-3 game in favor of the hometown Glacier Range Riders. Looking for their bigger, biggest win ever over the Billings Mustangs. Said to have missed the zone. Count goes to two and one. <laughs> Actually, we also have a new catcher in here. And, and uh, apparently, as we get a swing and a miss there, count goes to two and two. Enriquez is the new catcher. But Enriquez will hit for Miller. And Pardue will come in for Mazone's spot and play first. If that makes any sense. I believe he's trying to get Pardue an at-bat. And a swing and a miss. Barnett gets the strikeout. Little confusing. I know. We'll uh, explain it when we get to the bottom of the inning. It should be. <laughs> it should be Livingston Morris, John Pardue, and Brian Williams, I believe, due up in the next half inning. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> Nick Hogan's getting every, p every player he can get in right now. And I'm sure all those players that are getting in right now appreciate him for it, especially in a 13-3 ball game. But our official scorer, Brittany, as well as myself, um, a little bit um, rattled, you could say. 1-0 pitch coming in from Barnett. That one swung on a high fly ball by Raper down the third baseline, and it's going to be foul out of play. Count goes to one and one. Again, Enriquez, Ramon Enriquez, the new catcher. John Pardue, the new first baseman. And likely Morris Pardue and Williams do up in the next half inning. Swung on. Made some contact with it. Foul ball makes it one and two. One, two, two outs. Nobody on here in the top of the eighth. Brett Barnett pitching his first inning of work to Jackson Raper, who's one for two today. A one, two, as the crowd here, I think they're going to stick this one through, most of them. As they see a Range Rider win on the horizon. 1-2. Skips in the dirt. Count goes to 2-2. Two two. Barnett, his stats for the Range Riders thus far this season are to the tune of a 9-6-4 ERA, an 0-2 record in four and two-thirds innings pitched, and three strikeouts to three walks. A big luxury for him to have a 10-run advantage here. As he's going for a 1-2-3 inning. The 2-2 will come in from the left-hander out of South Dakota State. Hit foul. John Pardue almost fortunate to not make contact with that ball because his feet might have been in the fair territory side. And it would have been interesting to see how that one was called if he would have made contact with it. Well struck by Jackson Raper, but it goes foul. 2-2, two, two. we'll do it again. Lefty-lefty matchup. As the southpaw, Barnett, sets at the chin and fires. Another foul ball. Count will stay 2-2. Two and two. Barnett. He stands 6 foot 4, 200 pounds. And I already mentioned, started his professional career with the Mustangs. 
before they let him loose up to Glacier. 2-2, two, two, two outs as Barnett. A long pause. Kicks and fires. Up high, we go full for Jackson Raper. On deck is Klein and Jackson. If Raper gets out of here, you're guaranteed to see Klein, Jackson, and Hovey. If Raper walks, then Jackson, Hovey, and Barth are guaranteed to at least see the plate before the end of this ballgame. 3-2. Swung on, foul ball, stay alive, Jackson Raper. Let's take another check on the Pioneer League scoreboard. We could get out of this inning at any time, so might continue it at some point. Just to give you an update on what else is happening around the league. I already told you, NOCO and Grand Junction are postponed to Sunday. Great Falls leads Missoula 5-3 now. Idaho Falls is leading Boise 9-2. And Ogden, with a chance to clinch the Southern Division first half crown and a playoff spot, they lead Rocky Mountain in the top of the ninth 3 to nothing. Another 3-2 coming in from Brett Barnett. Swung on, foul ball up and over my head in the press box. And let's do 3-2 one more time. The defensive alignment, I'm just going to reset it all for you. Behind the plate is Ramon Enriquez. Over at first is John Pardue. Over at second is Brian Williams. Brant Broussard is the shortstop. He started there. And Brenton Davis is over at third. And Eddie McCabe is in left. Everybody except for Brant Broussard. Oh, my goodness. As that is a foul ball where the bat escaped Jackson Raper's hands, and it hit into the netting. And <laughs> for the fans that are sitting in the front row over there, they got a 3D shot of a bat coming right at their face and a minor heart attack. They're fine. A long at-bat here from Jackson Raper as he Tries to find the magic stuff to break through or at least get a walk. In center field, it's still Ben McConnell. And in right field, it's still Sam Linscott. I don't think there are any more options on the bench <laughs> for Nick Hogan to turn to in terms of defensive replacements or pinch hitters. So I'm going to have to go down the list and double check. But, yeah, he's used pretty much everybody. Swing and a miss. A long battle. But a battle won by Brett Barnett. He goes one, two, three after a 19 pitch inning. We'll be right back for the bottom of the eighth. Livingston Morris will step up. For him, this is his fifth trip to the plate. He has a single as well as 
a walk and a ground into a fielder's choice that he beat out to make sure he got an RBI on that one. First pitch misses. It's a ball. <clears throat> I believe McLean Harris is still pitching. And I believe it's – no, actually it's Ramon Enriquez that is up. And that one slashed right back to the pitcher. And forget about what I said last inning. Oh, no. Ne <laughs> Never mind. Wait. Ramon Enriquez thought he was on deck, but it's actually John Pardue on deck. <laughs> so it's not just up us up in the booth here that's confused. As we get John Pardue, that will come up. After the ground out. John Pardue, a man that will step up for the second time, or the third time. This is the third at-bat in his professional career. The first two at-bats he had in his professional career were strikeouts. He's looking for his... First career hit or to reach base for the first time on his own accord. He did come in as a pinch runner to score the game-winning run on Wednesday night in the walk-off victory over Billings. First pitch he'll see goes inside off the shoe tops. Count goes to 1-0. and That one will hit the zone. Count goes to 1-1. One and one. And that one will just be hit back to the pitcher, and it will be another 1-3 ground up. Just his third at-bat of his professional career for the rookie out of Columbus State University, Decatur, Georgia native. And Brian Williams, who's played third and second, and last night he played left. <laughs> And he has also just taken a beating today. Two walks as the first two times up, refused to hit the zone. He was able to single in his third time up, feeling pretty good about himself, and then he got plunked in the back of the head. That one will miss the zone. Count goes to 2-0 and for Brian Williams, who said it, said it the first time he was up. Clearly... He is a guy that is just a baseball-aholic. Swings on that one, out to center field. Will it get down? It will. A two-for-two two day. He's going to round and go to second. He'll be in standing up. The first extra base hit of Brian Williams' career has him into second with two outs. And what a day for Brian Williams, a coming-out party of sorts for the rookie out of Birmingham Southern. Up comes Brant Broussard, whose walk-up song is from Space Jam. Get everybody moving a little bit. He's got a runner on second and two outs. One for two day for Brant Broussard. First pitch goes low to the former Billings Mustang. Last year played with the team from the Magic City. They decided not to bring him back. Glacier feasted on the opportunity to get a veteran leader in Broussard, who has had baseball take him all over the country. Missing low there, count goes to two and oh. I've talked plenty about his collegiate career from Nichols State to Delgado Community College where he Took that squad to their first ever JUCO World Series win. Then to LSU, where clearly the storied baseball history of the Tigers and of the SEC Conference as a whole, he was a part of that before starting 
his professional career and <laughs> the movement for him in his baseball career did not stop once he went pro. First season in 2019, played in the Detroit metro area in the United Shores Baseball League. So that one will hit the top of the strike zone. Count goes to three and one. Then he went to the All-American Baseball Challenge, I believe is what it's called. I believe it's located in New York. Upstate New York, maybe? Where he played for the New York Brave in that. That was a COVID kind of pop-up league. Found himself someplace to keep his baseball career alive. As, of course, 2020 with no minors. And basically everybody in some sort of attendance capacity restrictions. It was incredibly hard for baseball to be played for clearly life to go on as usual as it it didn't for a while there. But he kept his career alive in the All-American Baseball Challenge. And then last year, started with Tri-City, finished with Billings, went from the Frontier to the Pioneer League. This one is laced to the gap, but coming in to pluck it out of the air is Gabe Wirtz for out number three. Brant Broussard, a well-struck ball, but just not enough on it to score the run. We will head to the ninth inning. It's 13 to three, Glacier leads. The last chance for Billings to overcome a 10-run deficit will be guaranteed Klein, Jackson, and Hovey. Brett Barnett is the pitcher that will look to finish it off. First pitch swinging, and it's a high pop-up. Ramon Enriquez will track it all the way back and come up with the snag. One pitch, one out, as Ramon Enriquez does a great job to track that one high up into the lights that are now on here. As we approach the 10 o'clock hour local time, Midnight Eastern, where likely M Millersville, Maryland native Bryce Jackson has his family maybe staying up to watch this ninth inning. Although I wouldn't blame them if they figured that tonight was just not the Mustangs night and turned it off after Jackson hit his home run earlier in this game. One of the few highlights is the big swing by the man at the plate. 0-1 as he sees a strike there. One out, base is empty. 
Brett Barnett tries to go six up, six down. And he will be one strike away from going five up, five down. And getting ever so close to pitching the final two innings perfect. Noah Barros, a great start. Seven innings, just allowed three runs. His offense came to play. They utilized three straight innings where they load, loaded the bases with no outs to get plenty of runs, including five in the fourth and a swing and a miss there. It's in the dirt. Ramon Enriquez grabs it. The throw to first is on target and in time to John Pardue for out number two. A strikeout puts us one out away. It will be, unless there are some runs put up by Billings, the biggest win ever for the Glacier Range Riders here at Flathead Field. The first pitch coming in from Brett Barnett. Missing the zone, says the home plate umpire. Jordan Hovey at the plate. He's the last chance. Two strikeouts in his most recent time up, as well as a pop out. 1-0, two outs, base is empty. Barnett, a deep breath, and he fires. Swung on a foul ball. The Range Riders, two strikes away from being undefeated all time in their red jammer jerseys. A can't miss show on Friday nights here at Flathead Field. 1-1 one, one with two outs. Hobie does not swing at that one. It goes to two and one as it hits home plate and skips to Enriquez. Barth is on deck. Thrall falls in the hole if we get there. Barnett would rather not. That pitch splashes the zone. The Billings Mustangs are down to their final strike. And these two teams play tomorrow night as well as Sunday afternoon at 3.05. But a seven-game series could be clinched with a win right here. All he needs is a strike. Brett Barnett sets on the mound, kicks and fires. <laughs> the home plate umpire will not be swayed into calling a strike three if he doesn't see it that way. We go full. Three, two, two outs, and I applaud the integrity there by Craig Struble. Three, two, two outs. The pitch coming from Barnett. Misses up high, and this game will be extended by at least one batter. Jordan Barth comes up. A two strikeout day for him, as well as a single, one for three. Range Riders still one out away. First pitch, that one called a strike. Count goes to 0-1. Nobody is leaving this ballpark quite yet. They want to see out number 27 on the Friday night. 0-1 coming in. Runners going, it's hit over to third. Fielded by Brenton Davis, thrown on target and in time for out number three and the Range Riders win. Undefeated in Jammer Red, it's a 13 to three victory and the largest win ever by the Glacier Range Riders at Flathead Field. From pitching to defense to taking advantage of Billings' mistakes. Utilizing 13.
13 runs from 11 hits to vault to victory. Billings, five hits and three runs on it. It is a long way from the six inning, five run victory that Billings had here on opening night at this ballpark. The largest win at home for the Glacier Range Riders before tonight was five runs. They more than double that in the 13 to three victory that we just saw here. Not much more you can say about what Glacier has done. A great crowd making their way out. We encourage you, if you're in the Valley, come out tomorrow night. There's a lot going on. I mean, if you're even from Billings, leave bright and early from South Central Montana. Get here, watch some music at the end of the Big Sky Festival, which is going on all day tomorrow. And then come and see the brand new facility that we have here off of Highway 93 between Kalispell and Whitefish, Montana, located in the Flathead Valley. And what a game it was for a Glacier Range Rider squad that is feeling as hot as they have ever felt winning four of their last five, and we haven't seen them play like this since their opening matchup in Colorado Springs, their opening series with the Vibes, where you can't really take much from that because of where Rocky Mountain was at that point. It is a final score of 13 to three, and let me go over some of the nitty gritty. I'm gonna have to figure out somebody to maybe highlight as a player of the game, and interview, but it's going to be difficult because Noah Barros pitched a great game, seven innings, three runs allowed on five hits and eight strikeouts and two walks. Brett Barnett pitched the final two innings scoreless without allowing a hit, just dropping a walk. And then you take a look at the offense. Where did it come from? Well, Sam Linscott was the big benefactor. Brian Williams as well stepped up and had a really good game. Brody Wofford also had two hits. No home runs for the Glacier Range Riders and no triples, just two ex or three extra base hits. Ryan Cash doubled, Brian Williams doubled, as well as Sam Linscott. The RBIs, three belong to Ryan Cash and three belong to Sam Linscott. And it was three runs scored by Livingston Morris. What they limited today as well, the strikeout numbers. Just four for the Glacier Range Riders. And you put it in play, good things will happen. We learned that a couple nights ago, and it is only reinforced by what we saw from the Glacier Range Riders tonight. Again, your winning pitcher, Noah Barros. He pitched seven innings, three earned runs, eight strikeouts, and two walks. The losing pitcher is Sean Kiley. Three innings pitched, six earned runs, two strikeouts, and three walks. Brett Barnett is one inning short of a three-inning save, but he still slammed the door shut, gave no hope to the Billings Mustangs. The Glacier Range Riders have officially won the seven-game series between these two squads, but they play two more as Glacier would be very happy to win six out of seven, and that looks very much within reach the way they've been playing. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's broadcast. The final score, 13 to three in favor of the Glacier Range Riders over the Billings Mustangs. My name is Scott Gladstone once again. And for all of us here at the Range Riders, as I watch, look over and see Livingston Morris make his way into the crowd to sign some autographs. It's a good full circle moment for why minor league baseball is so fun and so important. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. My name's Scott Gladstone. Please have a great rest of your night and stay safe out there.